Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, Kalimeresis. At the end of today's Gospel from St. Matthew, it says, So also my Heavenly Father will do to every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. We learn in the writings of the fathers and in Orthodox theology that the heart is the center of our spiritual life. It is where the Lord dwells if we wish him to be with us. It is a place where there is plenty of room for God and everyone else, or it is a place where there is not room for God or anyone else. In the Old Testament, Moses is chosen by the Lord to lead his people out of Egypt. And so Moses goes before Pharaoh, telling him that he should release the Hebrew people. Pharaoh is not going to release them. The Hebrew people for hundreds of years have helped Egypt build its famous empire, its buildings, even its pyramids. Moses says you need to release these people. Pharaoh does not believe Moses or in the God that Moses represents and that his brother Aaron also represents. Moses tells him, there will be seven plagues that will come upon Egypt until you release the people of God, the Hebrew people. The plagues begin, and each time there is a plague, we read that, Mo that the heart of Pharaoh is hardened. A hardened heart is a terrible thing. It can happen to anyone, even when the very presence and power of God is evident. There are those who will not accept. There are those who will not believe. And each time they either see a miracle or perceive that something extraordinary has taken place, their heart is hardened against God against accepting that there is a power greater than themselves, greater than all people on the earth. The heart is where God will abide in each of us. If we allow that to happen, the Lord is not going to force himself even on us individually. He wants us to accept him fully and freely. In the gospel passage today, we are confronted with the ungrateful steward who owes a great deal of money to the king. And the king wants him to pay the money that he owes. And he says he cannot. And so the king is going to throw him into jail. He's also going to sell his family so that he will collect the money that is owed him. The steward falls to his knees and begs the king to have mercy on him. The king does have mercy, as we read in the gospel, and forgives him. The steward then turns and, walking a little further, comes across a fellow steward, a fellow servant, who only owes him a hundred denarii. It's like owing $10,000 or a hundred dollars. And he grabs his fellow servant by the throat and says, pay what you owe me. His fellow servant says, I cannot, I don't have the money. And he throws him into jail, along with and ready to sell his family until he could pay his debt. The king hears of this injustice 
and calls the ungrateful steward forward. What does he say to him? He says, you wicked servant. We don't hear that term very often, do we? Except in the movies. We really don't refer to anyone as wicked, unless perhaps we're talking about witches or a demon. You wicked servant, he says. I forgave you all that debt because you besought me and should not have you had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you. And in anger, his Lord delivered him to the torturers till he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Forgiveness is a great gift that the Lord has granted us. It is a gift that the Lord exercises for all of us and expects us to also exercise the same to one another. But it is easy for a heart to be hardened. It really isn't difficult. Anger can harden one's heart. Selfishness can harden one's heart. Ego can harden the heart. There are many things that can harden one's heart against even a relative or a close friend, as well as someone that we really don't know. It can happen in a moment we begin to not appreciate the person that is in front of us, who we are jealous or envious of. And every time they do good things, or are willing to help us, our heart becomes hardened because our ego cannot take the kindness and the love that is expressed. Perhaps we feel that we are not deserving of it. Perhaps it is something that the other person is not truthful about. But the hardness of one's heart needs to be thought about. And the forgiveness that we offer one another is the same forgiveness that God grants to each of us. For which one of us is worthy of his mercy and worthy of his love? For how often in a day do we turn away from God? How often do we say things that we should not say? How often do we do things that we should not do? How often are we jealous or envious of others? How often do we think ill of someone who has wronged us, even if it has been done wrongly? The Lord wishes to dwell in our heart, but if there is malice and anger and hatred and jealousy and ego that has taken hold of the heart and that has filled it to capacity, where is God going to dwell? Where is there room for him if we have placed everything else there in our heart with no room for God? May our heart be full of his love and his mercy. May there be so much room in our heart for God that there is room for all others, whether we know them or not, whether they wrong us or not, that the Lord God shares not his love just with us, but it emanates from us as it emanates from each of the servants and the saints in his name. This morning there is a Matins Gospel. There are 11 of them that are read in the Matins service. The 11th one talks about the Lord being with his disciples and offering Peter the opportunity to feel good again, to be in the presence of God. You'll remember that Peter denies the Lord three, three times. And so the Lord asks Peter, do you love me three times? For each of those times, the St. John Chrysostom tells us to offer Peter the opportunity to receive the Lord's forgiveness, his love, and his mercy. 
Do you love me, the Lord says. Peter says, you know, Lord, that I love you. Feed my lambs, he says. A second time, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know that I love me, love you. Tend my sheep. A third time, the Lord says, do you love me? And Peter, with some frustration, says, yes, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. Interesting that the first instruction to Peter is to feed his lambs. And lambs are small. They are almost childlike. They are not fully grown. The second time the Lord says, after he asks Peter, he says, tend my sheep, take care of my sheep. Sheep are more fully grown. They are like adults as compared to children. And the third time he says, feed my sheep. Sometimes it is easy to feed lambs, to take care of children, to feed them. They are innocent. They are loving. They are all forgiving. It is easy for us to embrace them and to love them. But to tend to adults is a little bit more difficult. To attend to our fellow man, to look upon them and to see what their needs may be, to look on them and to say, he is my brother and my sister, how can I help them, is a little bit more difficult. Adults carry with them all sorts of issues. And the back and forth between adults can be difficult. But then the third thing the Lord says to Peter, feed my sheep. So not just attend to them, but feed them, nourish them, just like children. Perhaps it is a small difference, but for me, the meaning is great. For as we grow and become adults, it becomes more difficult not just to tend to one another as adults, but to also find opportunities to feed, perhaps to instruct, perhaps to care in a more visible and more loving way. May God's grace be great. May our heart have plenty of room for him. May it never be hardened by the cares and challenges and distractions of the world. Amen. <laughs>